Only the worthy ones will be rescued. Only after all the unworthy become non-existent in this world. I'm praying every day, requesting help for you from heavens. But the best help is that we help ourselves. Because there are ways and means that all the masters sent by God already taught us since time immemorial. The Guan Yin method is the only method that leads to Buddhahood. The other methods can possibly give you liberation and not return you to suffering, birth, life, sickness and death. But it won't give you Buddhahood. So the Guan Yin Bodhisattva has expounded that this Guan Yin method is the best. If you want to be with Buddha, and of course liberate it at the same time, this is the sure way, because it's direct. From 84,000 methods, the Buddha taught Ananda, the Guan Yin method, the method to contemplate on the original eternal sound within and the eternal light within. Many other methods contemplate on different chakras of the body. But it takes long, long, long journey, long, long, long practice. It could be many lifetimes until you reach the crown chakra. So the Guan Yin method brings you the best, the highest, starting from the highest chakra already. But it needs a master, truly an expert master who can open it for you to go up there. Anyone who even says my name one time or remembers me with a good heart, with a pure pureness, they will all go to Tim Kotu's Nirim between the 11th and the 12th heavenly abode. Please continue watching to find out more. On Monday, October 7, 2024, our most treasured Supreme Master Ching Hai, vegan, kindly set aside time from her intensive meditation retreat for the preservation and betterment of our world to remind us that we are undergoing an unprecedented period of turmoil worldwide and it is humanity's responsibility to take action by practicing spiritually as many enlightened masters have taught. She also explained how the Quan Yin method fundamentally differs from other meditation methods in terms of gaining complete enlightenment. Greetings, all my best of souls. Actually, all the souls are the best, yes. It's just the mind that makes trouble for everyone. In order to control the mind, we just have to practice, for example, with the funny method. I can never emphasize that enough. Hope all of you are okay anyway. Yes. Today, I just want to specially thank you, all the diligent workers, teams of Supreme Master Television, and also all the people who upload some of my talks onto the websites of different uh, social media. I don't know how you did that, and I did not know that before. I just know them recently, you know, like some weeks ago, or uh, months, no, weeks ago. Ah, uh, time passed so quickly, I didn't know. I thought I'd been in this tent situation just like four or five days. But when I looked back, you know, checked, it's already one month and one day. When you are so busy, you do not recognize the time and space even. And by the way, I just wish you all the best in God's blessing and wish you a speedy improvement, progress in your spiritual endeavor. Please remember what I told you last time. 
Okay. Of course, for the Kuaning practitioners, you already know what to do. But for the outsiders, the vegans, vegetarians, and non fish please try to be vegan. Vegetarian is very good. It's not killing, but it also causes a lot, a lot of suffering for the cow people. And the cow people are also bred in excessive numbers nowadays. And then it produces this kind of cow people raising animal people raising produces it's a lot, a lot of, of methane and endangers our planet and of course our lives. I'm still in the wider forest. I forgot I wanted to thank also some uh, individual and some website media who deleted some of the harmful speech from some liars. Unfortunately, they were trying so hard to attack me and, you know, this is life. I mean, in the physical life, it is, I guess, unavoidable. Even in the Buddha's time, Jesus' time, Guru Nanak's time, Lord Mahavira's time, Prophet Muhammad's time, peace be upon him, and Baha'u'llah's time, etc. All the master's times, in their period of time, they always had to endure a lot. And not everybody knows about it. Not many know about it. But I'm more fortunate, I think, because I have a tent even to stay warm in. It's about 10 degrees or a little less outside. Yes. But it's bearable. It's just there is a wet here, wet there, you know, and the water condensation stays in the edges of the tent so that you have to wipe it or air it out by in the morning opening of the zipper so that the air comes in and then maybe you have to air it out your sleeping bag outside if it's not raining of course yes or you air it out under the protective layers of the tent it's just inconvenient to live in a tent because you have to rely on battery but it's doable nowadays and that is very convenient you know if you don't have a car you can as a taxi driver, if you treat him well, he might help you to bring the battery home and charge it for you, or you find some station that helps you to charge and, you know, try to find a way. There's always some way to take care of yourself when you live in a tent. If you have a little foldable or portable solar panel, it also helps. But you have to be very frugal. <laughs> I'm very frugal with <laughs> with battery because I rely on that to work right now. If I didn't work for Supreme Master Television with so many shows every day, then I would not really need the battery at all. You don't need it. If you live in a forest, you know, in the woods, there's always dry wood about, and you can use that to cook and warm yourselves. And you can use the coals. After the fire, you can use all the coals and put them in a ceramic little pot and cover it with ash, a little thin ash on top. That will be warm for many hours. That's how you keep the outside of your tent warm also. And if you open the tent zipper, the warmness of the coals it will also be inside your tent and it will keep you warm for a while. That's what the people in the countryside in Vietnam do. My grandmother did that. After she cooked the meal, at night she saved the coals and put them under her bed in a little pot, yeah, ceramic pot, and put it under her bed. But the bed in Vietnam is different, you know. Because the bed has no cover or anything, it's just some uh, wood beams underneath, and then they would put you know, like a tatami thin sheet made of grass, like those that you bring with you to the beach in summer. Yeah. So, of course, the warmness of the coals will be felt when you lay on it. Talking about a taxi, in my situation, you have to walk far away to the 
street in order to call a taxi using one of the street house numbers and stay there and wait for the taxi. Where I live, there is uh, <laughs> there's an address of no address. <laughs> the tent life is not too bad. It's free. It's more free. Just that inconvenience, because if I have to work such as my workload, you know, I need a telephone, I need a computer, and of course then I need electricity. Lucky nowadays you can have a battery, you can charge it, and then you can use uh, electricity from the battery, which is doable. Every couple of days you have to change. It's just uh, more inconvenient, the most inconvenient is that the telephone doesn't always work. Sometimes it takes me half an hour to connect with some of my team members. And that's the only inconvenience, because I have to let them know that they should pick up the shows that I have edited, for example, like that, or tell them to go in to contact. They are not always at their computer. And my computer sometimes uh, doesn't work very well. The internet is not always very smooth, but it is doable. Oh, thank you, God, for all that. I'm really grateful for all these inventions, which make people's lives more comfortable, more convenient, and time-saving. The normal person, normal citizen in the world today lives better than a king in the old times, truly like that. Yeah. And if we have all peace, you know, and a vegan world, then this is a paradise to live for. Such a beautiful world. We just have to keep it. Anyway, I'm very grateful already to be alive and to still be able to work for you, for this world, for all beings on it, whom I love so much. I'm praying every day, requesting help for you from heavens. But the best help is that we help ourselves. They say that God helps those who help themselves. It is true like that, because there are ways and means that all the masters sent by God already taught us since time in memory. We know what to do. We just don't want to or don't really care so much about it. I really think it's not important. It is important. Just like you live in a society, in the world, there are laws in different countries. You have to abide by them. Good laws or bad laws, you just have to abide by it in order to survive, in order to have at least peace within your life and with your neighbors. It's not easy to live in this world, I know. I know that. Yeah, some uh, send me <laughs> some articles about some monks who kind of uh, talk bad about me. And uh, they wanted to uh, kind of openly air it. I said, no, no, these are different monks. They just misunderstood. They just did not read well, study well about my teachings. And they misunderstood. <sighs> But they are not demons. We only try to fix the demons, not the normal human monks. Monks are just humans. When they do not study a lot, they only get fixed into a square of knowledge of something and fix themselves to it, uh, which is also not bad. It's just that uh, in my position, I have to teach people. I have to know many things. That's why I studied with different religions since I was younger, up to when I came out to take this business. You have to know, because people in the world, they have different opinions and different religious set systems of belief. You have to know in order to explain to them, to teach them, to integrate into their way of knowledge, into their opinion. If you don't know all that, you can't teach people. Suppose I'm just a normal monk. What shall I do? Huh? Just teach Buddhist people to recite Amitabha Buddha or recite some mantras or recite some sutras. 
if people even have those sutras, there are so many sutras in Buddhism. Thus, we have to know many things in order to live well with other faiths and not be attacking other faiths and only saying, my faith is the best, it's the only one, and the others are heretics. That is not the right concept. Because as I have studied more many religions, I know all main good religions came from the same source, God. And their knowledge, their explanations, their teachings could be understood slightly differently because of the ways they express them. But if you truly know the best method, like the Kuan Yin method, which is the only method that leads to Buddhahood, then you are highly enlightened. Then you truly understand your religion and all religions is true. All the methods can possibly give you liberation and not return you to suffering, birth, life, sickness, and death. But it won't give you Buddhahood. Some could even take many lifetimes. The Buddha also admitted that. That's why he gathered 25 Arhat, great masters of that time, to teach, to explain, expound to his uh, beloved attendant, Ananda, about which method is the best. Thereupon, the Tathagata said to Manjusri, son of the Dharma king, these 25 bodhisattvas and arhats who no longer need to study and learn have related the expedient methods used by them at the start of their practice for their realization of bodhi. In reality, each of these methods does not differ from and is neither superior nor inferior to the others. Tell me which one of them is suitable to Ananda so that he can awaken to it and which one is easy of achievement for the benefit of living beings who, after my nirvana, wish to practice with the bodhisattva vehicle in their search for supreme bodhi. I now submit to the world-honored one that all Buddhas in this world appear to teach the most appropriate method, which consists in using pervasive sound. The state of samadhi can be realized by means of hearing. Thus was Avalokitesvara freed from suffering. Hail to the regarder of sound, who, during eons countless as Ganges sand, entered as many Buddha lands to win the power and comfort of his independence and bestow fearlessness upon all living beings. O you who have achieved the sound profound, the seer of sound of sound the purifier, who, unfailing as the sound of ocean tides, saves all beings in the world, make them secure, ensure their liberation and attainment of eternity. Excerpts from the Surangama Sutra So the Kuan Yin Bodhisattva has expounded that this Kuan Yin method is the best. It's the one that leads you to Buddhahood, if you want to be with Buddha. And of course liberated at the same time. This is the sure way, because it's direct. <laughs> you have a direct flight to New York from where you are. Then surely you will reach New York. Hmm? Every other flight will go in different directions, but not to New York. That's the method that the Buddha emphasized for the assembly of his monks, including Ananda. And that's the method I teach. But, <laughs> you see, not every monk knows this method. There are some monks who came and studied with me, and they know it. But how many other monks would know this exceptional best method of the 84,000 methods that you can choose from to enlighten yourself and also to liberate yourself? With a master, of course, with the living master who teaches you, of course. It's not just the method, it's the masters who master it. If you are lucky to meet such a one, and are taught this superior method, then you surely will be enlightened and will become a Buddha. Thus, Shekamuni Buddha, the world honor one, 
introduced this to Ananda through Manjushri Bodhisattva, who exultingly praised the master of Kuan Yin method, contemplating the inner eternal sound stream, Kuan Yin, as this Bodhisattva spent numerous aeons practicing this method for self-realization and for rescuing the suffering beings in all worlds. From 84,000 methods, the Buddha taught Ananda the Guan Yin method, the method to contemplate on the original eternal sound within and the eternal light within. That's the method that will lead you to Buddhahood, total enlightenment. But alas, how many monks know this? That's why they attack me because they misunderstand. Not all monks who attacked me are demons. Thus, I do not always respond to all the attacks. Sekamuni Buddha taught also many other methods of different levels to his uh, followers, as you know already. So he introduced many other Buddhas to them, the Amitabha Buddha, Medicine Buddha, Krishikabha, Bodhisattva, etc. And the Buddha also taught the method of contemplating the physical body. And some even contemplated so deeply that they saw the body is only bones. Of course, that's the structure of our body, the frame which our body is built upon. But this uh, body and all this structure and the mind, which uh, functions to direct the body's parts to function, this is from the second level only. Thus, if you contemplate on that, you might uh, avoid hell. And maybe when you go up there, you see the Buddha and other holy saints, then you can learn with them. But it takes a long, long, long time. And uh, many other methods contemplate on different chakras of the body, meaning different centers of the body even from the feet upward, or from the solar plexus onward. But it takes long, long, long journey and long, long, long practice. It could be many lifetimes until you reach the crown chakra. So the Guan Yin method brings you the best, the highest, starting from the highest chakra already. But it needs a master, truly an expert master, who can open it for you to go up there. You see, the highest chakra needs an enlightened master to help you to open it up. And some so-called masters also teach you similar in the light and sound methods. But if uh, his level is low, then that's all he can take you to. Like, he only attained the second level or third level, for example. Then that's all. That is where he can take you. He can't take you any further than that. And some fake masters, of course, they don't have anything to teach you. They just talk the same. They copy my talk. Exactly. Even copy, play and with bad people. And, oh, my God. It's such evil because to mislead people into your low, evil domain is the worst thing you can do to anyone. But, of course... Evil entities, they do that. That's what they do. They mislead people, they cheat people, they delude people into believing in them so that they can have a bigger entourage, so they can control them, can enslave them and make them do wicked things for them to make the world chaotic and loveless and warlike so that they can control people's minds. And then they can create war and all that, in order to eat up the astral bodies and the energies of the agonizingly dead, or even still alive, half dead, or nearly dead people. So it's very dangerous to be near some monsters like that, who fake to be a monk or fake to be a teacher. In some of the black magic or normal magical practice, some people can be adapted to sucking the juice out of, for example, an orange 
so that they don't have to even eat the orange. They can use their magical mind to suck up all the juice from the orange and make the orange become empty and squeezed up, just an empty shell. Furthermore, some evil people, they have this kind of power to suck up people's life force and energy. So whoever goes near them or believes in them, and if they want to eat that person up, then they keep sucking them up gradually until that person withers and dies, like a dead flower, nothing left. It depends on how many evil fake masters do that together to one person. If only one, then it takes long, and then that person doesn't die and wither so quickly. It's slowly, slowly. Yeah. Most of them, they do that so that nobody suspects their evil deed. And also they don't need a person's life force or the life force in one day or one go. They do it slowly, slowly, sipping it, like you sip in water. And this is really evil. So you might see somebody who has been kind of adored by the big public or even been forced the title of Buddha, leaving Buddha on them. But that person will cause death, sudden death immediately or slow death by making the followers or the monks next to them die in slow death with severe sickness. It doesn't have to be a monk, you know, just somebody who follows that idol closely then suddenly it just becomes ill, gravely ill, and slowly, slowly, slowly dies. Or dies quickly, it depends also on how many entities in that group who suck up that person's life force. This is very dangerous to just believe in anybody. <sighs> There's so much work for me to do, and so much I can't even explain. I just hope some people would understand, or well, at least my own God disciples, they should understand this. That's why I explain all this to you. <sighs> and that's why God wanted me to reveal those evil entities. There are more, still hidden, or not easy to be exposed, though this is the time they will show up more obviously than before. They are also much more powerful because they lured so many humans into their gang, thus doing sinful deeds, earning different painful hell, so the uh, evil demons can use that agonizing energy to empower themselves because that's how they continue to exist and get stronger. That's their food. So it's better to stay focused only on God, saints, good benevolent thoughts, avoid bad vibe persons, and keep wise friends. Do not go into the cemetery at night, least of all to sleep there, as few are strong enough to deal with the bad energy there. You could be unwittingly possessed by demons. At night, they are ruthless and stronger than usual. Please take good care. If you have to pass through the cemetery, remember God reciting saints' names nonstop. Ask for protection. May you Always be vigilant and safe by heaven's grace. Oh, poor people in this world, poor people. I'm obliged to explain because I'm their teacher. I have to tell them everything that I know. I mean, as long as heavens allow it, something heavens don't allow, but that doesn't mean it's something harmful to them. It's just that some things they should not know because the plans of heavens are not always open to the whole world to know because mostly it's useless. They don't understand and they don't listen anyway. And that's why 
some of the initiates, you know that sometimes you go near somebody and you feel uncomfortable. So many of you experience that firsthand, even going near Kang Tam's followers or listening to his talk, and you come home and get sick, very sick for many, many months. And even if you are just a sister of that person, you also get sick taking care of him. If you did not have this master power protection and the true Kuan Yin method, then you would have died together with your brother as well. And even some of the Trang Tam Soko followers turn to me and take refuge in the real Kuan Yin method. But the evil energy still lingers in their body and makes them sick. But even then, the master always stands by and helps them, protects them. Anyway. Kính gửi sư phụ Tim Khâu Tu, con xin kể câu chuyện về tác hại của Minh Sư Giả Ruma mà sư phụ đã chia sẻ đến thế giới là hoàn toàn đúng. Gia đình con có 6 người, trong đó 5 người là đệ tử của sư phụ đã 30 năm, còn một anh trai chưa là đệ tử của ngài. Anh chỉ ăn chay và rắc tinh ngài. Năm 2021, tình cờ anh gặp một người ở quán chay. Cô ấy nói cô là thợ cắt tóc và tu học theo sư phụ, nên anh con đến tiệm cô cắt tóc. Trong lúc cắt tóc, cô mở cho anh nghe Ruma thiết giảng và nói là ông với sư phụ là một. Anh con cũng không hiểu là gì, cứ đơn thuần nghĩ cổ theo sư phụ thôi. Sau khi về nhà, anh bắt đầu có những triệu chứng trong lòng ngực luôn thấy nóng rang như lửa địa ngục thiêu đốt. Bên tai thì có tiếng nói quấy nhiễu, suy khiến anh nghe theo suy nghĩ tiêu cực và nhiều lần muốn tự tử. Ban đêm thì gặp ác mộng, thấy ma đến nói chuyện. Ban ngày thì thường nằm rên rỉ, bỏ ăn bỏ uống. Con chăm sóc anh nên đêm nào cũng gặp ác mộng như anh. Anh thiện cầu nguyện sư phụ cứu thì được thấy hình ảnh sư phụ hiện thắng thành quán âm Bồ Tát. Với bình nước nhỏ trên tay, Ngài dùng dương liễu vẫy nước lên đầu và dùng tay xoa so đầu anh, rồi anh cảm thấy ngày một đỡ hơn. Cùng thời điểm đó, một chị đồng tu ở Đài Loan Phomosa gửi tặng thiên trang SM do sư phụ thiết kế cho con. Giữa lúc đại dịch Covid cao trào, không thể nào có chuyện gửi thiên trang qua đường bưu điện được. Vậy mà nhờ phép màu thượng đế, con đã nhận được trong thời gian sớm nhất. Rồi con liền đeo vào thì nghe thấy ân điện thiên đàng xuống và nghiệp liền tan biến. Con và anh con ngủ ngon, không thấy ác mộng nữa. Kể từ đó anh dần hồi phục và khỏe mạnh trở lại. Anh con cùng gia đình xin vô vàng tri ân tình thương và sự gia trì của sư phụ. Kính chúc sư phụ luôn nhiều sức khỏe, an toàn. Hương Ngài, Mỹ Trang từ Âu Lạc, Việt Nam. So the real master power is what you need, not just any method, even the Kuan Yin method. If that person just fakes it, just goes in and learns the method and go out, spreads the news and says they are master, I saw many, quite a few do that, but they can't help you. They can't even help themselves after they exhaust the blessing that's given at the initiation time. They will be snatched by the demons, or they are originally demons themselves coming in there just to destroy the teachings of the Buddha. Or in my case, try to make trouble for me and cheat people. I just hope that uh, people listen to some of this and stay away from such evil entities like Trang Tam, Hoi Bu, and any others who fake being Kuan Yin messengers or Kuan Yin masters. Please stay away from them. Even if you don't believe in me and my power, just go find any other holy, wholesome monks or teachers, okay? And I have told you already where. And I have warned you to be careful whom you choose to be your teacher, yeah? The Kuan Yin messengers are rare. Kuan Yin method teachers at a high level are rare also. Only if you're lucky, sincere, God might lead you to meet them. If your karma is too heavy from past lives already, maybe it's very difficult for you to even hear of the name Kuan Yin Method, not to talk about believing in it or finding the best master for you. Even when Buddha was alive, he's so trustworthy. He was a prince, 
and he taught real, all compassionate and good things. But when he preached one time, 2,000 monks walked out of his talk because they believed they knew everything. And they thought the Buddha was preaching heresy, just like what some monks think I'm doing right now. It's very difficult to teach people in this world. The master of Paramahansa Yogananda, Sri Yukhtas Giri, said that the beings in the astral world where he is teaching are easier for him than the people, the humans on this planet, because uh, humans are having a complicated nature, a dual nature, you know, negative and positive. So it's very difficult for them to understand the real teaching and it's very difficult for them to recognize a true master. This is the problem. That's why we have problems in our world. <sighs> well, all of you, us, we just wish one day that this world turns into paradise. That still can happen, but only the worthy ones will be rescued. Only after all the unworthy become, you know, non-existent in this world. And that's what heavens are doing right now, trying to warn humans by different disasters, diseases, pandemics, and all kinds of things that come in, like flooding into our world right now, all kinds of unimaginable disasters, unprecedented man-made or so man made or natural disasters, diseases, and pandemics. Oh, it's worse than any other time in the history of mankind. Major natural disasters and ongoing humanitarian crises. And uh, I try my best. But humans have to help themselves also. They have to U-turn. Instead of going into the negative direction, just U-turn to the positive. The most simple is being vegan and praying to God, praising God. Now it's very crucial as the devils and demons are allowed to seduce humans, to force negative thoughts and deeds on them. And then humans cannot escape being their slaves or suffering forever in hell. Oh God, just to think of their lot, I suffer too. <sighs> we keep working day and night and Supreme Master Television running. So at least to keep the world in some degree of stability and balance, otherwise, Oh, you could never imagine how it would have been if only the negative evil force rules this world. But how many people want to do that? How many people are still having the clarity of mind, clarity enough to follow that? Just simple, being vegan, remembering God, praising God every day. Even that they cannot do. <sighs> Just like many people who follow Trang Tam, they know that I still exist and I'm still teaching others. 
and I'm still giving initiation through my Kuan Yin messengers or myself, but they run to Trang Tam instead, just because they don't even have to be vegan or vegetarian at all. So many of them now know Trang Tam is really a demon, so they turn to me, but it's too late also. Some are too late. And some are still not vegan, even after following Trang Tam for a long time already. They still are not vegan. So now, even if they turn to me, they still need to wait for the purification time. Being vegan for time to purify themselves, at least three months. Otherwise, whatever I give them, it will be poison. It's just like the way Trang Tam did. He couldn't care less about compassion, or the animal people, or the planet, about anything. So it just anybody can come in so that he can have a big crowd and a, a lot of offerings and be selling a lot of things, useless things to make money. Tôi từng là tín đồ của Trần Tâm. Tôi trực tiếp tham dự các công việc nội bộ như tiền, sinh hoạt, ăn uống, mua sắm. Tôi biết hết tất cả tính tình và nếp sống sinh hoạt của hắn. Càng lúc tôi nhận thấy nhiều việc làm không đúng đắn như lấy tiền của thiền sinh, thậm chí có cả những thiền sinh phải bán nhà cửa để cúng giường vì sợ hắn tù éo có những thiền sinh nam ở ra ngồi và tố cáo ngược lại vì bị hắn quấy rối tình dục trong thời gian tham gia đồng thớ rất nhiều người bị như vậy hắn còn viết thư đe dọa và chủ yếu cả gia đình sẽ bị bệnh hoặc chết nếu không quay lại với hắn những cánh tay đắc lực tự xưng là hộ pháp và xuất gia của hắn tự do vô viết thu tiền của thiền sinh cho hắn và thậm chí bỏ vào túi riêng trong những dịp bơ quan đồ ăn bị bán với giá mất tiền thậm chí gấp 20 lần so với thực tế vì hắn báo có lực lượng giá trị như một trái sao bê chơ hắn tự trồng với giá 100 đô một cái bánh xèo 500 ngàn một đĩa cơm 1 triệu đồng và còn rất nhiều những việc khác tương tự Roma Trần Tâm là tên lừa đảo trắng trợn, mượt đạo hại đời. Chúng ta cần phải lên án và tẩy chay để cứu rất nhiều người đang lầm đường lạc lối. Ông ta tự đúc tự của chính mình rồi bán ra với giá 5.000 đô la Mỹ, tức khoảng 120 triệu đồng Việt Nam. Và bắt dẹp hết, không được thờ Phật, Chúa hay cửu huyền, đúng là ma quỷ đội lúc người. Đến một cái bát khất thật mà y cục bán với giá 2.500 đô, khoảng 60 triệu đồng Việt Nam. Ông ta trục lợi đến mức bán một chiếc chăn ấm cho những thiền sư đi theo ông ấy với giá 30 triệu đồng. Roma gọi là chăn ấm hóa giải nghiệp chướng. Ông ta chiêu dụ bằng những lời ma mị là mua tất cả những thứ đồ ông ta bán có thể giải được nghiệp cho dù nghiệp chướng có nặng đến như thế nào đi nữa. Quý vị có thấy sự mâu thuẫn trong chính lời nói của ông ta hay không? Khi chính ông ta là người đã từng nói rằng Ông ấy có quyền năng hóa giải tất cả các nghiệp chướng của tất cả các chúng sanh Mà đằng sau lại đi lừa mọi người bán rất nhiều thứ với giá cắt cổ Và phải mua, sẽ giải hết nghiệp Ôi, những điều đó thật là hoang đường và ảo tưởng Mà sao có rất nhiều người u mê Nhẹ dạ cả tin đã bị ông ta lừa không những tiền mất tật mang mà còn nhà tan cửa nát, hồn tiêu phát tán. Hãy thất tỉnh. Kính gửi sư phụ, sáng nay con đã xem chương trình giữa thầy và trò trên truyền hình vô thượng sư. Sư phụ đã xác nhận lại rằng Trần Tâm là một sứ giả quán âm giả mạo ở Âu Lạc Việt Nam. Sư phụ cũng đã nói, chưa ai từng nói với tôi về cái tên này, cùng với tất cả những rắc rối liên quan. Vì vậy, con viết thư này để trình bày với sư phụ những gì con đã chứng kiến về ông ấy khi con còn là một người thọ nửa Pháp. Con đã được thọ tâm ấn nguyên Pháp hơn 20 năm rồi. Liên lạc viên trước đây đã dẫn ông ấy đi khắp Âu Lạc Việt Nam để truyền tâm ấn vào những năm 1990. Ông ấy cũng tổ chức nhiều kỳ bế quan và khuyến khích các đồng tu mua tranh và các vật phẩm khác của ông để được xa trị. Ông ấy đã lập một nhóm làm việc gồm các đồng tu trẻ và tận tâm để xuất bản và bán các giáo lý của sư phụ cho các đồng tu người Âu Lạc Việt Nam. 
tin rằng sư phụ đã chỉ đạo ông ấy, chúng con đã hỗ trợ ông ấy trong mọi hoạt động cho đến khi chúng con biết ông ấy bị trục xuất. Vì ở Âu Lạc, Việt Nam, chúng con không có tự do tôn giáo, nên những hành động của ông ấy đã gây ra một mớ hỗn loạn dẫn đến việc một số đồng tu bị bỏ tù. Rất nhiều đồng tu ở Âu Lạc, Việt Nam, bao gồm cả những thành viên gia đình con, những người đã nhận được chỉ dẫn tâm ấn từ ông ấy, tin rằng họ được sư phụ truyền tâm ấn, cho đến khi họ nghe sư phụ xác nhận hai lần. Họ đã đăng ký xin thọ tâm ấn thông qua các liên lạc viên chính thức, sau đó được các liên lạc viên dẫn đến các địa điểm thọ pháp. Các đồng tu này vẫn tiếp tục tham gia vào nhóm chúng ta, tham dự các kỳ bế quan và gặp sư phụ. Nhiều người trong số họ đã được duyệt làm người hướng dẫn chương trình cho truyền hình vô thượng sư, trong khi những người khác làm liên lạc viên hoặc làm việc cho truyền hình vô thượng sư. Nguyễn Cầu Thượng Đế ban phước cho sư phụ với sức khỏe dồi dào và lực lượng mạnh mẽ để tiếp tục sứ mệnh cứu hộ thế giới này, đệ tử chân thành của sư phụ, Vân Anh từ Âu Lạc, Việt Nam. Con xin kính chào sư phụ và đội ngũ truyền hình vô thượng sư. Con xin phép được chia sẻ thể nghiệm nội tại của con liên quan đến tác hại của việc đi theo minh sư giả. Gần đây, một chị đồng tu con quen bị ốm rất nặng. Chị ấy gần như không còn sức sống, thều thảo ngây ngây vô định. Chị ấy được bệnh viện cấp những loại thuốc về thần kinh và chị ấy dường như đã bị nghiện thuốc. Khi sử dụng phương pháp chữa bệnh khác, không dùng thuốc đó nữa, thì chị ấy lại bị nhớ thuốc, vật vã khó chịu. Trong khi ngồi thiền pháp quán âm và cầu nguyện, con thấy con đang ngồi trên một bông sen nhiều cánh với một vòng sáng bảo vệ quanh thân thể. Còn chị đồng tu đang ngồi dưới đất với vòng sáng yếu ớt mỏng manh. Có một đường dẫn từ con đến chị ấy. Con đang giúp chị ấy, nhưng bên ngoài vòng sáng của chị ấy là minh sư giả trần tâm và một tên quỷ có màu xanh, đỏ, nâu, hung dữ đang tấn công chị đồng tu. Chúng hút năng lượng ánh sáng mà chị ấy đang có và dường như muốn hút cả linh hồn chị ấy. Con đã tấn công chúng để chúng tránh xa chị ấy, nhưng sức lực của con không đủ. Và trong lúc con dường như yếu đuối sắp thua, chúng tiến đến gần con, một ánh sáng rực rỡ trói lòa từ phía sau con, đánh bật chúng ra xa. Con ẩn vào vòng ánh sáng lớn lao đó của sư phụ và được bảo vệ. Chị đồng tu cũng được bảo vệ. Chị ấy được đẩy vào, hốc một gốc cây lớn ngồi thiền và ngài gút lớp đến ngồi bên ngoài gốc cây đó. Sau khi tỉnh lại, con hiểu rằng bởi vì trước đây chị đồng tu từng khao khát tâm linh nhưng lại theo nhầm minh sư giả trần tâm. Sau khi hiểu ra sai lầm của bản thân, chị ấy đã tự nguyện cắt đứt hoàn toàn với kẻ đó, sám hối và được sư phụ truyền tâm ấn. Nhưng ảnh hưởng của minh sư giả đã đi theo, bám lấy chị ấy, quấy nhiễu và làm chị ấy kiệt quệ cả về thể chất lẫn linh hồn. Con xin cảm tạ tình thương và ân điển vô vàn của sư phụ vì đã yêu thương, chăm sóc, bảo vệ chúng con cùng toàn thể nhân loại. Cầu mong nhân loại sớm thức tỉnh, khai ngộ, chuyển sang lối sống thuần chay để thiên đàng tại thế hiện diện nơi địa cầu xinh đẹp này. Xin Thượng Đế và các cõi thiên đàng bảo hộ sư phụ để Ngài luôn mạnh khỏe, bình an và trường thọ, đệ tử của Ngài, huyền châm từ Âu Lạc, Việt Nam. So that is not the way. We have to be truthful, sincere and pure. But to think about it, I think it's so funny, you know. So many monks just attack one little old woman like me. Or are using my name to gain fame and fortune. Only men. All of them are men. Men. <laughs> oh, God. Don't they have anything better to do than just dive in their nose into my work and my life and my private life even. Past private life. Not just now private life. Isn't that funny, huh? Why do men do this? Maybe <laughs> only men are so greedy and ambitious. They really make men look bad, yeah, and make their country look bad. All of them are from Ola, Vietnam. Some even are refugees who I have tried my best and risked my life to rescue running around the world to beg 
countries to accept them. And they turned on me, betrayed my trust and my favor. But uh, for humans, you know, many don't understand, of course, that's normal. So I don't blame these people. I only talk about those uh, demons, monks and entities who are trying to harm the world, making war and uh, eating up people alive. Because God wants me to. And because if I know it, I cannot just ignore it and let them continue to harm people. But for humans, they misunderstand it's possible. Even those uh, human monks, you know, they study Buddhism, are supposed to study, but they don't know much <laughs> about all the Buddha sutras. They don't understand much about what the Buddha was teaching. That is a problem. But the demon monks, they did all that on purpose because they're working for demons. They want to destroy Buddhist teachings, the true teaching of any other religion because the religions are similar anyway. And they did all that on purpose, either to destroy Buddhism or other religions or to destroy other monks' reputations who, for example, believe in Amitabha Buddha and reach certain heights in order to go to the Amitabha Buddha land. And in this life, they gain quite many more followers. Up to now, the monks who reached Amitabha Buddha's land are also few because they can't be one-pointed enough or they don't have enough faith even though they practice it. But still, the lowest would be going to the lower level of Amitabha Buddha's rim and the highest would be in the middle. In this period of time, none have reached the highest level of Amitabha Buddha's land. My disciples, my God disciples, have Many of my disciples, uh, God disciples, have gone to the very high level of Buddha's land. And many of them, of course, in this lifetime, reach different levels of consciousness. And when they die, they go directly to my realm, Timkutu's new realm. Uh, many monks who have helped me or who have loved me and somehow accepting me at some time during my life. Also, I went to uh, Tim Kutu's uh, new room, my new room, and many uh, people in the world who have uh, helped me in any way uh, in, with their loving heart all go to Tim Kutu's new room after they die. I'm very uh, happy to tell you this because these are pure-hearted people, you know? And pure-hearted people will go to my realm, whether they are officially my disciples or not. They just need a pure heart. And anyone who even says my name one time or remembers me with a good heart, with the pure pureness, they will all go to Tim Kutu's new realm between the 11th and the 12th heavenly uh, abode. It's the highest you can reach in the universes. I'm very happy to tell you that. So, of course, if you are my so-called God disciple, you will reach there. And uh, one more thing to remind you. A long time ago, I told you to uh, keep some food for two weeks, you know? And still, you keep that practice. This is uh, very uh, convenient and secure for you. And when they are almost outdated, you use them and replace them with new ones if you can. Just uh, keep the dry things 
simple things like uh, maybe brown rice, sesame, or any of the cereals that last long, rice, lentils, dry beans, those things, and salt, pepper, oil, the bare necessities, the basics. Do not uh, hoard too many things. It's not necessary. Two weeks of provisions is enough in case of any emergency at all. But then, of course, we have to rely on God and your own spiritual merit by remembering God, endearing yourself to God and any Buddhas and saints that you have chosen and practice compassion. Because in heavens, people don't kill. In heavens, people don't uh, destroy the environment or destroy the lives of other beings, such as animal people. So that's very logical, okay? So be vegan, keep peace. Do good deeds also, if you can. And above all, remember God, remember the saints and sages, the masters, the Buddhas. May God Almighty and all Buddhas, masters, bless us all and help us to overcome our weaknesses and to survive this unprecedented testing period of our time. Amen. Okay, uh, <laughs> my uh, battery is running low now on the telephone, so uh, I cannot talk much more. Maybe next time, yeah. I wish you all the best. I'm still doing my best for all of you, by the grace of God. Do wish me success. Thank you. God bless. God love. God protect. Amen. Most benevolent master, in the midst of the planet's upheaval, you bring the world much joy with your precious words in these messages that are very uplifting and healing. Despite many enormous inconveniences, including working by battery, you are still trying every possible means to reach humanity to wake them up, so that they will remember God and be compassionate vegans, thus be away from hell punishment. We can never thank Master enough for the innumerable ways you have blessed all beings. May Master be ever secure with peaceful surroundings and enjoy vigor and the best of health in the love of God Almighty, the saints and sages, and all glorious heavens. Please tune in on Tuesday, October 15th, 2024, on Between Master and Disciples, for the broadcast of this message with more subtitles. Also, for your reference, please check out previous related Between Master and Disciples messages and conferences, such as Where to Find Sanctuary in Good Religious Traditions, The Zealous Ghost Falsely Declaring He is Maitreya Buddha, a seat in the higher realm is secured by honest diligence, Master's grace, and God's mercy. All universes approved and God granted power to a Buddha for saving countless souls. Buddha, great master, is not just a mere title. Knowing which is the real master, monk or priest. The false master's name the world has to know. The Buddha or Messiah we have been waiting for is here now etc. To view these and more related between Master and Disciples messages all free for download, please visit suprememastertv.com and search for How to Save Your Life. <laughs>